with your data and you would improve your analytical skills because you would com be comparing uh, languages all the time. For those of, uh, sorry, not for um, not for polyglots, but for people who normally carry to language uh, classes, normally, um, so it would this type of course would also help to improve their uh, feeling for languages. And later, if they just want to focus on one particular language, they would be pick it up much much faster because they are used to this comparing and understanding the logic of languages. And uh, uh, in general, in a country as a whole, of course, those courses uh, would also improve uh, like uh, mutual understanding between cultures. Of course, the more you know a language, the more you're into it also from the cultural point of view. And uh, um, it goes without saying that, of course, would be much better, so it would enhance uh, your job opportunities. So when I said that you could learn it much faster, what, I mean, what do I mean? I, I mean that um, it depends on you. Of course, anyone has his own pace to learn language, but in the same amount of time you would be, uh, you would learn, you would normally uh, learn one language. You can learn like five. Um, okay. And so, how does it work? Let's say, um, as far as the group courses are concerned. So I would normally suggest, I would um, recommend teaching up to five languages. It's possible up to 10, but it, uh, of course it would be better maybe for polyglots 10 or for people who are really interested in all the languages. Because uh, um, I have several five language uh, uh, courses and I would, uh, the advantage is that, uh, first of all, students do have the time to do their own their homework. And if they were like 10, it would be a bit more challenging, but I don't think it would be a problem for you. And uh, um, the other reason is that it's rare to find in a normal language school uh, people who are interested at the same time in 10 languages. And of course, as uh, you all know, motivation is very important uh, uh, in, uh, so in, the, in terms of uh, success in learning a language. So, um, and as far as one-to-one uh, -one classes are concerned, um, of course, you, we can imagine that people would be learning a uh, language much quicker, but uh, at the same time, it's much more tiring for both of them, for both the uh, teachers and students. But there is a real advantage, this is actually what I've just said, so that it, at least if it's like a one-to-one -one class, uh, you can choose the languages you want to learn and you are already motivated for that. So um, some of you may be um, online teachers and uh, um, what I think is that it's possible to teach multiple languages online. The only thing is that it's very, very important, much more I think than, than for other languages that um, t uh, teachers do have uh, material and actually very good uh, one. Uh, why? So, you know, like on I talk sometimes you can have like informal tutoring and just be talking, which, which is fine and I really like it. But uh, for 10 languages, you d do need to compare them and uh, uh, to have a very clear structure. Otherwise, the, the mind gets a bit confused. And the second thing I do think for online uh, teaching, you, you, need, you would need an excellent online uh, whiteboard because uh, if you're writing multiple languages on the same board, whiteboard, then you need like uh, different colors and, and um, students would be very confused if, uh, if uh, there is only one color and I, at the very least, many whiteboards, you cannot really switch it so quickly that the, uh, the lesson doesn't get boring. So. so I also would like to show you what uh, some people think of these courses. So as you can see, so um, this student, so he's 64 years old, he has attended three uh, 10 language uh, courses and one three language uh, course. Uh, so he's speaking in German, but I, I wrote subtitles. This course makes a lot of fun. It has many advantages. What about the lesson structure? Of course, each class has different um, constraints. For example, if you're teaching in a school, um, they, might, uh, may, um, they might tell you the class has to last one hour or two hours. 
But uh, so so these are my personal preferences. I really like like I think there are enough long, like 90 minute uh, lessons for three language courses, and uh, um, two hours 15 minutes for a five language course. Um, the way la uh, the lessons are structured are um, there is a certain amount of time for each language. Like here you see also for the other examples, like for a seven language course or a 10 language course, what they all have in common uh, is that, that there is a certain amount of time, like between 20 and 10 minutes according to the amount of languages, because the lesson cannot last five hours. Um, and then a common time to revise and compare all the languages, like more or less uh, 30 minutes. And I think that some of you might be thinking, 10 minutes for a language? For a language, is it great? It's it's crazy. So I wanted to show you. I I taught one student for a, a Russian for ten minutes. So I wanted to show you what he learned. And the student is not a polyglot. He's not a polyglot. He has never learned any Russian or any Slavic language. And uh, he had he had some Spanish and French at school, but 15, 15 years ago. So, and this one was his uh, very first Russian lesson and lasted 10 minutes. Hallo nochmal. Jetzt Russisch. Как тебя зовут? Меня зовут Андрея. Где ты живешь? Я живу в Петербурге. На каких языках ты говоришь? Я говорю Uh, 